The 2019 Bentley Continental we drove a little while ago is new from the ground up, including the 6.0-liter twin-turbo W12, now producing 626 horsepower and 664 pounds to foot of torque. The new Continental weighs 4,947 pounds and can go 207 miles per hour lo and behold, a few weeks ago along comes Aston Martin unleashing its new DB11 AMR. Its 5.2-liter twin-turbo V12 boasts 630 horsepower and 516 pounds to foot the AMR weighs 4,133 pounds and can go 208 miles per hour. Coincident? AMR, or Aston Martin Racing, is to Aston what AMG is to Mercedes-Benz and M is to BMW. When Aston launched AMR at the 2017 Geneva show, boss Andy Palmer said every car the company builds is eventually going to have an AMR version. The DB11 AMR will replace the standard DB11 as the new range flagship. The AMR's horsepower is up 30 on the DB11 V12 and 127 more than the V8-powered DB11. The AMR hits 60 miles per hour in 3.5 seconds, and the 208 mile per hour top speed makes it the fastest production Aston. For now. Meanwhile, the suspension is tuned for more connection without harming the ride, according to Aston. In other words, make it handle better than a DB11 but not at the ride quality's expense. Additionally, the 8-speed automatic's calibration is quicker and Aston modified the DB11's active exhaust for what it says is a more vocal note in Sport and Sport Plus mode. No doubt about it, the AMR is gorgeous to look at, all and bulgy with exposed carbon fiber and black trim distinguishing it from garden variety DB11s. Bright work, headlamp surrounds, tail lamps, front grille, are dark monochrome while the roof is gloss black and the hood blades and side strakes are carbon fiber. The interior is gorgeous, too, Aston has really upped its quality game inside. It looks far more modern than the old DB9, with monotone leathers, faux leather upholstery, all high quality and beautifully stitched together. Here's just one example, remember that goofy cheap looking little screen that flipped up on the dash? It looked bolted on, and not very well. It's gone. Another little screen is in its place, this one sourced from Mercedes, it owns 5% of Aston. This new screen is stationary, and looks and feels like it is meant to be there. Even the door handles feel good, robust. There's really nothing able to delight the senses as a good old-fashioned V12. Its unique vibrations and sounds and just gobs of torque are addicting. In the AMR, there's plenty of oomph from the get-go. Of course, no turbo lag whatsoever, just a strong, creamy response, with the 8-speed ZF Auto transaxle shifting smoothly and quickly. It's a fast but forgiving GT. The ride feels fine no matter the mode, though I prefer the middle sport setting. To me it offers the best combination of a fine ride with a near zero body roll and corners. Sport Plus makes the car feel a bit too twitchy, too edgy. Keep in mind, this is a big grand tour, not a sports car, though with 626 horsepower it can be a hooligan if you want. Even this racier AMR model is meant to travel tremendous distances in no time. Not necessarily carve up Laguna Seca, though that would be fun, too. The suspension lets the car float a tiny bit but not too much. The Aston really shines on fast, gently curving roads, as one would expect. That's where its athleticism is most fluid and where I can best take advantage of the glorious engine. It even has cylinder deactivation, though I never feel it. Thanks for watching.